Hey, everybody, really excited for this chat today as we talk about how AI is shaking up the world of SaaS, especially for companies under $100 million revenue and a company that is helping SaaS teams uh, scale and build smarter and faster at Launchpad. Um, Jason, how are you? I'm excellent. Great. Uh, good to meet you, Evan, and uh, glad to have some time here with you. Yeah, thanks for joining. Really intrigued by what you guys are up to. Uh, first, tell us about Launchpad.io. Uh, sure. What's the big idea? What is it? And uh, who is it built for? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Launchpad.io, uh, we announced it two years ago. Um, it's a product spun out of Pega Systems. So Pega has been around for 40 years. We're a one and a half billion dollar company focused on large scale enterprise. And we took our proven capability um, for kind of the largest, most influential companies globally. And we're really built a platform specifically for software companies um, to make it easy to build agentic and AI enabled solutions that they can take to market uh, very fast. Sounds amazing. Can't wait to dive in before that. I mean, how did you get into SaaS? Um, how has the landscape evolved, uh, particularly the last few years since you've been in this space? Sure, sure. I've been in SaaS before it was called SaaS. Uh, so I, I started a company in 2000 um, when I saw the opportunity to start working with uh, Salesforce.com. And there were a couple other um, competing companies at the time, like Upshot uh, in the CRM uh, space, uh, really disrupting things. And so I started a consulting company implementing Salesforce.com, uh, built that company up, um, had Salesforce Ventures and a VC um, invest in my company and merge us with a competitor. So we became about a 500 person global consulting company. So over that time, we implemented about a thousand implementations of SaaS solutions and projects. Um, and then after that, uh, went on to start a couple of app exchange companies, was involved in kind of leading sales and marketing for another one. Um, and so, yeah, I've been kind of on both sides of it, um, running services, doing product companies. And then when I joined Pega in 2017, uh, they had me come here to basically start our corporate venture program. Um, so I run that and often advise uh, entrepreneurs building companies uh, focused on both services and product within SaaS. And then two years ago, um, moved into this role to run go to market for uh, Launchpad. Brilliant. So you've seen firsthand the many waves of tech, the OG internet, of course, but then, you know, cloud and mobile, the, you know, big RPA automation wave. What makes this current wave uh so powerful so different especially for SaaS companies well i think you know all of these waves there's always that um fear uncertainty and doubt that that an entrepreneur has uh, but there's also that excitement uh, because you've got these uh breakaway unicorns that you know happen within every one of these trends and waves um but you know i think as you sit there as a you know small to mid-size uh, entrepreneur you know, you're like, okay, how do I take advantage of this? But also, you know, am I being outpaced and how am I falling behind? Um, and so I think that that's one of the big challenges today is that with AI, it's moving much faster than any of these waves that we've seen in the past. And yet I think a lot of us like yourself, probably who've seen this movie before, we know that it's not magic and that it's not going to all of a sudden happen overnight because especially in the B2B world, companies take time to change, right? And so there's an opportunity, um, but it's going to close quickly for these companies that are, you know, under $100 million software companies to really pivot and figure out how they become more AI native to really compete and maybe even unlock, you know, growth that they never thought possible. Oh, such a great point. And tell us more about the site and the mission at launchpad.io. Great name, by the way. Uh, but who's it built for exactly and how does it make uh, the, yeah. you know, your tech more accessible to that audience. Sure, absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, we've been really strong. Peg has been strong in workflow orchestration mm -hmm. and um, really heavy in the enterprise space. And so we had lots of interest from the market of organizations that want to take our technology and go build products and take them to market. But our platform in Pega wasn't architected for it. So about four or five years ago, we started a new project, which was basically to build Launchpad as a ground up architecture, which is, you know, mm. web first, fully, you know, kind of SaaS native, um, partnering with AWS. And so we really created a, you know, kind of out of the box SaaS platform that's multi-tenant, does subscriber management. It's a low code development, 
um, really built, you know, for us, um, you know, for software entrepreneurs and builders that want to get to market fast without, you know, the complexities of code and stitching together 10 or 20 different services. Um, and then we handle all the cloud ops and scaling um, automatically. Wow, that's really interesting. So founders, the software entrepreneurs you speak of are uh, under serious pressure. They have an amazing opportunity with all the tools out there, but lots of roadblocks, lots, lots of challenges. I, I've talked with hundreds of founders personally on here on the show, but what's your point of view from the biggest challenges, roadblocks, hurdles they need to overcome and, you know, bringing AI uh, really to market in their products? Yeah, absolutely. So you asked, you know, who, who's it for? So I'd say the biggest impact that we've seen is with startups that build from scratch on Launchpad. And then the other big group that we're helping are companies, as we said, kind of you know, 1 million to 100 million, where you know, they don't really have enough R&D budget and resource to really invest in what it takes to go transform their business, right? So they're, mm. they've got existing client relationships, they've got an existing product, they've got some tech debt. Um, they're probably having trouble keeping up with just the requirements to satisfy their existing backlog of features and capabilities for their existing customers. And now all of a sudden, the, the AI wave hits them, right? And so I think a lot of those companies are either stunned or trying to figure it out. And it's very hard to take your, you know, kind of legacy tech and then transform and become more of an AI first company. And so where we're finding Launchpad helps is those organizations can either use us to quickly build agentic AI solutions um, from scratch that complement an existing product, or they could embed AI powered workflows into an existing product to move their product from just tracking information and reporting on it, like a lot of B2B SaaS applications were doing five, 10 years ago, to really actually getting the work done and executing that work and putting them on a path to help their clients adopt some of the new AI and agenda capabilities. Yeah, that, that's incredible. So the classic question of make versus buy, build versus buy has been with us for, for decades. Uh, it's never been easier to build. I mean, my last programming language was Fortran and Pascal, and yet I'm able to tinker and, and do some fun stuff and with code generation these days. So why not just build in-house? Um, what's your sort of uh, value proposition? Yeah, uh, no, good question. So I, I think the, the shift that's happening is that, you know, in the old days, you know, early 2000s and dot-com, you'd build everything yourself. You'd build your mm -hmm. payment gateway, messaging services and everything. Today, you wouldn't think to build a payment gateway. You'd probably just use, um, you know, Stripe or Shopify. You're not going to build an SMS gateway. You're going to use Twilio. Um, you're going to use an ecosystem of technologies, right? Because at the end of the day, it's about, you know, in B2B SaaS, how do you deliver the fastest value and the most impactful value to your clients? And if you're caught up in managing code and different technologies, you're just not going to get there fast enough. So today, you know, leverage, you know, you're leveraging LLMs, the latest models, you're leveraging some of these other tools that are out there. And Launchpad is just another one of those as a tool mm. in the bag to get you there faster, because really, you know, we're giving you a lot of capability out of the box that you shouldn't have to go spend your hard earned money or VC money on building mm. out workflow capabilities that you could just get and then really focus on your IP and your go to market strategy. Oh, really compelling. So yeah. the other thing that's changed a lot over the years is, is customer behavior, buying behavior. The mythical customer journey has changed dramatically. We all do our own research and our expectations have changed. But what do you see from your partners and customers around buyer expectations for SaaS products? So they, they can be pretty finicky. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. So I think, you know, in the B2B space, you know, businesses are looking for um, you know, solutions that are actually going to deliver outcomes. Um, they're not looking to just track information. So when I was implementing Salesforce, they were excited that we could track leads and we could report on opportunities. And that was a great thing because we could do it well. Um, that's not acceptable anymore, right? Now, now you actually want the system to actually go book meetings and nurture them mm. and automatically take them through a process. Or, you know, if you're doing a, um, a lending process is orchestrate all the different systems and connect them and mm. move the customer through the journey, but with a human in the loop and in a compliant way. Right. And so that's, that's where things are going and that's where customers are starting to expect. So we're finding that businesses are pumping the brakes on buying new point solutions 
they're doing experimentation on AI themselves, and they're wondering if their current, you know, B2B SaaS vendors are really going to evolve to address the oncoming needs that they're going to have and expectations. So these software companies over 100 million, they really need to pivot quickly and really shift from that mindset of just tracking and automating to actually starting to orchestrate and deliver more value and impact for the businesses. So I, I can just tell a quick story if, if you don't mind. Please. Um, so uh, recently we had uh, one of our companies that um, we invested in a few years ago. Um, they were a single digit you know, million dollar company doing services. They transformed themselves into a, a SaaS company, built 100% on Pega, um, scaled up their business. Um, they've now gotten on a track where they're exceeding 50 million in ARR. Wow. And um, they didn't do that through custom code. They leveraged our low-code platform, our workflow orchestration. They built a fintech solution that they're now the leaders in their space. The company's called Quavo. And they just got a um, $300 million financing from Spectrum Equity. And so it's an excellent kind of proof point of, you know, how they really went and said, look, we're not going to go waste our time on custom code and doing full stack engineering. We're going to take a platform that's excellent and proven for workflow orchestration and getting this done and then really put our unique value on top of that and really just focus on delivering outcomes for our clients. And now they've incorporated AI in the last couple of years to a point where, you know, banks that they sell into can now process disputes and resolve them um, wow. with a fraction of the number of people that they could have in the past, um, leveraging kind of that or workflow orchestration plus AI, and it's really becoming more of an agentic solution. That sounds amazing. Are there certain industries or verticals? You mentioned financial services and banking that you're getting a particular traction in. You know, there's yeah. needs vary from healthcare to manufacturing and on and on. Yeah, I mean, in the segment we're serving, um, where there's, you know, in any business you have workflow, right? So in verticals, I would say that um, you hit it on the head, which is healthcare, financial services, insurance, real estate. Um, you know, those verticals are very strong for us, but then we're also seeing horizontal solutions being built, um, you know, within HR around recruiting, um, leveraging AI for, you know, bringing in resumes, interpreting those resumes and moving them through a process and booking meetings with, uh, you know, hiring managers um, to interview those scored resumes. Um, so a wide diversity of things. Um, but really, I'd say where it's an intensive workflow process, there's complexity, there's lots of integrations, there's a potential to leverage AI and potentially, you know, drive some automation. Um, you know, those are situations where it's great to you know, kind of leverage Launchpad to get there faster. So as I talk to entrepreneurs and kind of CEOs and CTOs of kind of mid-sized SaaS companies, it's really about, hey, you've worked hard to earn those customer relationships, to win those organizations as clients. Now is the time to really look at, you know, knowing their problems. How can you solve the current problem, but also look at additional areas where you can expand mm -hmm. into? Because companies don't want to buy a whole bunch of point solutions today. They want to work with a trusted vendor. And so if you can deliver value quick, leveraging a platform, you know, that's a great, great way to do it. Sounds amazing. And, you know, how does a, a new partner, customer, SaaS company on board with Launchpad.io, what's the process look like in the time frame? And uh, is it, you know, a clean sheet of paper or are you typically moving over lots of, of code or, or data or other applications? Yeah, no, great question. So, you know, generally there's kind of three examples I talked about. So, you know, either somebody's looking to build a new application mm. or rebuild one or add features to an existing application. So just go to launchpad.io, um, sign up for free. You can use our Gen AI Blueprint tool, um, which mm. effectively, you know, you just register, go in, describe in, um, you know, plain English what you want to build. Um, you can fine tune the text, step through it. It's going to go build out um, the workflows uh, based on our 40 years of experience in B2B workflow management. It's going to look at, you know, our industry knowledge. It's going to look at content on the internet. Um, and basically, it's going to draft up um, your data model, your processes. It's going to identify personas and then give you a really easy kind of drag and drop interface to basically fine tune that. And then, you know, what you get to within minutes is basically um, a working prototype that you can look at. What's the desktop application going to look like? What's the mobile application look like? 
what's a conversational UI experience. You can actually chat with your workflow. So if it was a, you know, a banking onboarding application that you just built in a few minutes, you could say, I want to open a new account and it's going to converse with you and ask you questions related to um, that process and take you through that journey automatically. So once you're ready to take that to market, you sign up for a subscription. Um, our subscriptions on Launchpad are, you know, under a thousand dollars a month um, oh. or less for startups. And basically that includes capacity and premium developer support um, to help you finish off your app and then take it to take it to market. And no, no minimums per customer, you know, no minimum cost per um, uh, user. Um, it's really just a consumption basis model. Fantastic approach, really intriguing. Try and keep it um, easy. Easy button, that's what we all need. Um, you know, when I look in the SaaS marketplace, there's a really crowded environment. There's lots of lookalike products. My little small business, I have a dozen SaaS tools for content creation and video and editing and all kinds of nifty Gen AI use cases. Uh, do you think there's a kind of future of too many lookalike SaaS products and there needs to be some real focus on differentiation and, and marketing and sales and go to market and maybe less on the, the technology, which has been a great leveler in many ways. hundred percent, hundred percent. I think that, you know, um, years ago, people would think of their SaaS company's value um, a lot of times as the code. Um, but it's not the code. It's, as you said, it's the customer relationships, it's your revenue, it's the value you provide to your clients, it's the relationships, it's your knowledge of their problems and how to solve them. And it really doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you're delivering a great outcome for the client and helping them hit their goals, right? Um, but I agree. I think that there's so much, you know, uh, long tail apps that are out there. Mm. But I think there's also a place for niche solutions, especially within the B2B space. And that's what we're seeing, especially with AI, is I think there's a lot of generalist AI tools there. But the key thing is really getting very specific. So like I was, I'm working with one entrepreneur who's building an application to really transform how dental offices operate. Oh, wow. And they want to use voice AI, you know, kind of, um, you know, while they're in with a patient to actually talk about what they're doing with the patient to capture some oh, wow. of that stuff handle the whole client experience um, from their dial in to, you know, kind of scheduling and all the way through to billing. And so really kind of transforming that experience, which are things you would expect from kind of an enterprise, but they're making it possible for a dental office, right? But they're going really deep in terms of understanding exactly what it is. The founders actually, um, you know, ran a dental office herself. She is a dentist, understands that market, what they need. And so I think it's where people go deep with their expertise in their niche and then build kind of enterprise grade solutions that a small business never could afford themselves, if that makes sense. That's a great story. Not going too deep at the dentist. I, I like the <laughs> exactly. no minor, but I, I would agree. And there's some great entrepreneurs doing amazing work. When I was talking to you yesterday in the um, CRM and, and voice calling sort of conversational AI space with um, pizza shops, yeah. and Domino's and, and sure. Noted, uh, uh, franchisees and um, they're doing amazing work in bringing tech that traditionally was not in those environments. So really cool stuff. So where are you? What are you up to in the next few weeks? I guess we're heading into the busy September season soon. Where can people meet Launchpad and you and the team and see what you're up to? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm I'm here. Reach out to me directly uh, or my team um, through LinkedIn um, or you know sign up for uh, Blueprint. Um, we're going to be announcing a set of uh, webinars. So we've got a joint webinar um, in the fall in September with AWS talking about agentic AI and how you add that into your products. Mm. Um, we're going to have um, kind of regional events across the U.S. Um, again with AWS. And then we'll be at um, AWS reInvent uh, in December. Um, we've got a session that we're running there and we'll have a booth there as well. Um, but ideally, we would have already helped somebody that's listened to this um, get an app and have revenue impact within this year. So they're talking about their success with us, maybe by reInvent. Fantastic. Well, I'll definitely see you at reInvent. And thanks for joining and sharing the mission. Absolutely. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Evan. Thank, thank you. And thanks, everyone, for listening, watching, sharing, as always. And check out our new TV show, techimpact.tv, now on Bloomberg and Fox Business.